safety and efficiency of an Airbus aircraft depends on aircraft design, procedure design, and a few golden rules developed by Airbus to ensure efficiency and safety. The golden rules are few, but they are extremely important when it comes to safety and efficiency. Golden rule number one, fly, navigate, communicate, in that order and with appropriate task sharing. Golden rule number two, use appropriate level of automation at all times. Golden rule number three, understand your FMA at all times. And number four, when things don't go as expected, take action. Let's dive into a little bit more detail about the individual golden rules to see what they each emphasize. Starting with golden rule number one, fly, navigate, communicate in this order and with appropriate task sharing ensures that in critical situations, the pilots are focused on doing what is most important first, and that is fly the aircraft. If you're not flying the aircraft, no one is. Therefore, it doesn't matter when the critical situation reaches the most critical point. If you inform ATC or if you navigate properly, the most important thing is fly the aircraft. Once you fly the aircraft, then we can focus on navigating and then we can focus on communicating. So fly the aircraft, fly the aircraft, fly the aircraft. That has the number one priority all the time. Don't allow anything to distract you as your role as pilot flying PF or pilot non flying PNF. The pilot non flying must actively monitor all flight parameters and highlight any excessive deviations to the other pilot. And both pilots are equally responsible for maintaining situational awareness and immediately resolve any uncertainty as a crew. Golden rule number two, use appropriate level of automation at all times. This aircraft has a lot of automation. In fact, modern aircraft today are stacked with automation that assists us in flying the aircraft. But here's the thing, the appropriate level of automation depends upon the situation and the task Therefore, pilot judgment prevails, including selecting manual flying if necessary. You must always understand the implication of the intended level of automation. You then select the intended level, and then you confirm that the aircraft is indeed responding in the way that you intend the aircraft to fly. Understand your FMA at all times. The FMA is the top portion of the PFD for each pilot, and it is how the aircraft relays information to us. Airbus likes to refer to it as the television screen that relays information to us, so it is in fact an interface unit. The PFD's FMA gives information about what the aircraft is currently doing, so always monitor your FMA. Always announce changes on your FMA. Confirm FMA. And here we're specifically talking about selections made, for example, in the FCU. And the aircraft is responding. We then confirm the aircraft's handling via the FMA. And understand your FMA. The FMA has five columns in the top portion of the PFD. And they're allocated to auto thrust mode, vertical mode, lateral guidance mode. Then we have approach capability. And finally, the auto flight level, such as autopilot, flight director, etc. We will come back talking more about the FMA and specifically the color coding in a little bit. And finally, and probably most importantly, Golden rule number four, take 
action if things don't go as expected. We place a lot of automation in the aircraft to ensure safety and efficiency. But at the end of the day, the pilots are placed inside the cockpit to prevail and overlook everything that's going on. It means when things don't go as expected, you take over. Pilot flying can take over by changing the level of automation. Even reverting to manual flying if required. The pilot non-flying also has an active role here. You are not, because you are pilot non-flying, just sitting passively and watching everything that's going on. This golden rule applies to you as much as it does to the pilot flying. Pilot non-flying can take action by questioning what's going on if things don't go as expected, challenging what is going on, and finally, take over. We call it the two challenge rule, and this is not specific to aviation. This is in fact used in many other professions when talking about multiple team members working together. The two challenge rule means that as pilot non-flying, you will first question what is going on, then you will challenge twice, but you will not challenge a third time, the third time you will take over. Seniority here plays a big role. But remember, two pilots are placed inside the cockpit for a reason. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're flying right-hand seat as the first officer, and you're flying with the senior captain. You're coming down on an ILS. You're full IMC condition, meaning you're flying in the clouds. It's at night, and you can't see anything. And you definitely can't see the runway. You know you're in mountainous terrain. The pilot flying is on the left side. The captain has the stick. You are pilot non-flying, monitoring everything. Coming down on the ILS, the captain intentionally puts the aircraft below the glide slope. What do you do? We have procedures and limitations for a reason. Now it is your job to act. Fourth golden rule, things don't go as expected, take action. That doesn't mean take over, not just yet. The first thing to do would be to question. The proper response here would be, Captain, glide slope. You're prompting the other pilot, in this case the captain, to watch out for the glide slope. The only response should be from the captain correcting, getting back on the glide slope. But instead, you get a response from the senior captain saying, it's okay. We do this all the time. This is the only way to ensure we get down to see the runway. That is never allowed in aviation. That compromises safety, not just for you, not just for the captain, but for every single person in the back. And they don't have a saying in this. They rely on the people in front. The situation evolves and we continue down on a glide slope. Now being even further below the glide slope, you now challenge the second time. Captain, glide slow. Again, the only proper response should be correcting, getting back on glide slow. Here comes the million dollar question. What do you do if the captain or your pilot flying in any scenario does not respond to the procedures and your call outs here? The final proper response following the fourth golden rule will be take control. Priority takeover is possible in this aircraft. We will talk more about that later, but this will be a scenario where you take over. We all hope not to be put in this situation, but the matter of the fact is it's most likely going to happen. You're being placed in a position where procedures, limitations, or regulations are not followed. And it is your responsibility to draw the line as to what you will accept and not accept. It should be black and white when it comes to regulations, 
limitation. So when we talk about the fourth golden rule, remember, it doesn't just apply to the actively flying pilot, it applies to both pilots as a crew.